Hey guys, welcome back to another Small Engines Questions and Answers. Sorry it's been a while since I put up an episode. It's just been way too busy around here. We've had record snowfalls. We've had approximately over seven feet of snowfall since the beginning of December. And in a previous video, I showed you guys just how much snow we have on the ground so far. It's approximately three to four feet of snow. Therefore, a lot of snowblowers have been breaking down and needing repairs. So today's Q&A is pretty well gonna be all about snowblowers. And the first question I'm going to start off with today is from a YouTuber who has problems putting back the bolts that hold the belly pan on his snowblower. What's happened is the holes are all stripped. And what he has is an MTD product. He's probably got a belly pan like this and what happens sometimes is the bolts strip. The reason they strip is because they're only self-tapping bolts and they just screw on the belly pan to some other thin metal underneath. With all the vibrations from a snowblower, these bolts can easily get loose. Sometimes people over tighten them and then what happens is they won't stay tight anymore. Well when that happens is I grab a 3 16 drill bit like this and I'll drill a new hole right beneath the old hole. Then I'll grab the new self tapping bolt or use the existing one and then I just thread it back in. It's going to go in really tight with a 3 16 hole. You can also put Loctite on the bolt if you want. And if you're careful not to over tighten it in the future, it should not come off. There's no nuts behind this to grab a good hold of the bolt, so you have to be extra cautious when you put your belly pans back on. Some snowblowers do have a nut underneath that the bolt bolts into, but when you have a blower like this, just be careful that you do not over tighten the belly pan bolts. Another question I often get from people is, why won't my snowblower augers turn? Well, I have a snowblower behind me and I'm just going to show you a very basic thing to check. One thing that's very easy to check is to make sure that the shear pin isn't broken. When the blower's not running you should not be able to turn the augers continually. They're just going to turn a bit like this but eventually stop. That's normal. But if you can do a complete circle with the auger it's more than likely that the shear pin's broken. The shear pins are there as a sacrificial part meaning that if you hit a rock or a piece of wood or something like that they should break before the gearbox breaks. It's a lot cheaper to replace a $2 shear pin than to spend hundreds of dollars to get this repaired or other parts inside your blower. Oftentimes when people ask me that question, that's all that's wrong. The other thing that can be wrong is that the impeller is frozen. The other possibility is that your belts are burned out. Now checking shear pins is something that anybody can do. Always keep a few extra on hand because if you're in the middle of a snowstorm and you break some pins, you're going to be glad you have them. Also, it's going to save you some downtime and also save you a lot of money from taking it to a repair shop. Also, another question I often get with people who have a snowblower with a Tecumseh engine is why won't my electric starter engage? Well, that could be because the shaft here where the gear slides on is a bit worn. Therefore, the gear isn't going up the way it should when you put power to it. It could also be that the teeth on your starter gear are broken. Now this gear is replaceable. Sometimes the gear may be jammed on the shaft from sitting and not being used for many years. Also, if you leave your snowblower outside year round, it will get rusty in there and cause it not to engage. It could also be that your motor is burnt, but if you plug it in, it sounds good, it spins, but it won't engage. More than likely it's the gear or the gear is stuck to the shaft. Now I do have an older video showing how to remove a starter and put it back on your engine. I'll post the link to that video underneath today's video. Now a lot of people ask me how you fix a flat tire on a snowblower? What's the best way to do this? Well what I do is simply install a new tube inside the tire. Usually when you buy a new snowblower it's going to come with tubeless tires. All there is is a stem here on the wheel and sometimes the air can start leaking around the tire and the rim. And I find that just by putting in a new tube, it solves all the problems and nobody has a flat tire anymore. Also, somebody was asking me, how do I determine the proper size of tube to install in my tire? What I do is I match up the numbers here on the tire, put in the tube, it fits in perfectly, and then there's no more flat tires. And by the way, the tires on snowblowers are usually two-ply. On this tire here, it says that the maximum inflatable pressure is 24 PSI. You don't have to inflate it that high, but it just tells you how high you can go. Now you've probably noticed that the blower behind me is up on its front end. People ask me often, 
is it okay to put up a blower like that? Is the oil going to go in all over the engine and cause it not to run properly? Well, my answer to that is it's okay to do that and I'll show you why. First of all, this one's okay in this position because I've made sure that the fuel tank was not full when I flipped it over. If your fuel tank's too full, the gas will come out of the fuel tank and it is very dangerous in your shop or garage. You may want to drain some fuel out of the tank if it's too full. You can either do it from the top with a turkey baster if you're not a professional or you may also pull the fuel line underneath before you tip it up and drain some fuel from there. And you want to make sure that the oil cap is on nice and tight so that no oil comes out of the engine. This is a flathead Tecumseh engine but I also flip over engines with an overhead valve engine as well. Just like this Briggs & Stratton engine over here and the same principle would apply. I make sure that the fuel tank's not too full and that the oil cap is nice and tight. I've never had any problems doing this and it is much easier to work on a snowblower in this position. Now a lot of my snowblower questions are about Tecumseh engines. That's because there's still a lot of those engines on snowblowers kicking around. A question I often get is why does my throttle bracket or lever come back when my engine's running? Well the reason for that is probably because your control bracket here is worn out. Now people aren't sure if you can buy individual parts for this bracket but my answer to that is no you can't. You have to buy the whole bracket assembly so if you notice that your throttle is too loose, this one by the way is not, it's nice and stiff but if yours is too loose and the throttle comes back to idle or shuts off then just replace the whole bracket. The throttle bracket part number is 34677 and that's pretty well for the 8 to 10.5 horsepower Tecumseh engines like this with a flathead engine. Now if you have a Tecumseh overhead valve engine and you find that your throttle is coming back easily as well, this one is part number 35702. This is what it looks like. I actually had to replace this one because the customer was complaining about the same issue. And after I replaced this old bracket here and put a new one on, his throttle was okay. Another question I often get from people is why is my snowblower wheel turning like this and I don't have traction from it? Well oftentimes this pin here will break. Now usually when this pin breaks the wheel will come right off the snowblower but sometimes it does not immediately do that. And this is the pin here I'm talking about. As you can see it locks the wheel hub to the drive shaft and if that pin's gone there's nothing else left to grab the wheel to the shaft. It's a cheap fix, so always check the pin if you have no traction on one wheel or both. And my last question for today is, how can I prevent my snowblower from rusting? Well, one good way to do that would be to rinse it off every time you use it. Now, that may be hard for you guys in the winter time. I know it is for me. Therefore, snowblower can easily rust like this one, especially this brand here. And you can see the paint's coming off. The reason that happens mostly here in Canada is because there is salt on the roads. When the plow goes by, you end up blowing snow that contains salt and in turn that makes your snowblower rust quickly. Even wiping it off with a rag would help or if you have some hot water, you can just come and pour it over it just to rinse off that salt. Now a lot of you guys may live out in the country and you don't get salt on your roads, but for us who live in town, it can be a major problem. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. It's free and have yourselves a great weekend.